Uh, when I was, uh, I was shot down, Harry and I had accelerated 600 knots again. We are getting ready to launch a little missile up around, a little Shrek, we call it. Um, and uh, we turned over a mountain peak, accelerated 600 knots, because we knew how far we had to toss our little missile. And if there's a mountain peak, there's a valley behind us, right? And so uh, there were two MiGs that we didn't see. Uh, we turned over a mountain peak, accelerated, and those two MiGs, <clears throat> they had 600 knots, they couldn't keep up. They didn't have to, they rolled out just as we turned over that mountain and they looked up, and here sat two big, fat 105s, and they both fired off an Atoll missile, a Russian copy of our Sidewinder, and a 105, and you see it today, it's a big, strong airplane. But what it will not take is a missile up the tailpipe. <laughs> it's just too much for, for the J-79 engine. And uh, we instantly started coming apart, and Harry and I had seen airplanes shot down. We were there a long time. We were on our 93rd mission. We seen guys hit. And they tried to slow down to get, they call it safe ejection envelope or speed. If you're going faster than that, the odds are of being injured or killed. But uh, the Air 105 was 500 knots, and we were well past that. And, but we decided if we're ever hit badly, we'll eject right now because the airplane was imploding or exploding, and we'd watch the airplane and the guy would never get out. So we said, we'll go, we'll be injured maybe, but we'll, we'll, we'll get out. And that happened. Uh, I'm, I'm a, I have a very respectful language I use, but I'll, just a quote here, I said to Harry, because he has, he has, Harry has to go first, because he blows his canopy, and you do it individually, and then I eject before he ejects, it's a rocket, so my, my rocket goes over the top of Harry, and uh, so Harry doesn't want that to happen. So I, <laughs> <laughs> so I nor do I, I'm a good guy, I don't want it to happen, but I told Harry, I said, you probably got a second max, maybe half a second, the time I say go, and you'll know from conditions, that's the only word I have to say. And I said, you go, I, I'll give you a second, and then I'm going to go. And so uh, Harry was a good man, he's followed orders, and I said, again, I, and when he, I said, go, Harry said, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we had a two-way communication. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> I want to introduce and, and let you see the people who made this day possible with the F-105, with, with the fabrication shop people from the 19th, Airlift Wayne, please stand up. <laughs> These guys took a lot of spare time and volunteered and did a lot of work. And uh, those of you who haven't seen the airplane today or yesterday, and you've seen it before, At this time, I would ask our guest of honor, Colonel Leo Thorsneth, to join me in the lectern. The day that I was for which a mission for which I flew the Medal of Honor, and I'm not going to go into it, other than uh, my wingman was shot down, and um, Harry and I knew where he was. My back I knew where he was. A flight of four, number three, number four had afterburner failure, and MiGs attacked him. They had to leave, so it just left two of us, and we were the first in. We were coming out last, and my wingman was shot down, so we got one left. And we knew where he was, and so we went out, got some, uh, we right down the coordinates, went out, got some fuel off the tanker because we were about out, and we expected a flight of four or eight to come back in with us. There's always mix up in combat, so we came back in by ourselves, and uh, I looked at Harry, and Harry, we talked to Harry in the back seat, and I said, Harry, you know the odds. If we go in, he said, well, the odds are against us, but he said, that's our job. And uh, so we went back in, and uh, we got, just as we got over where they were downed, we the, Harry and I in our one airplane, we surrounded four more MiGs. <laughs> but anyway, we, we ran out of fuel again, and finally another flight of four came in. The, the, the number four guy got lost, the lieutenant, and on the air he called me. You never use first names in combat on the air. And he said, Leo, I got 600 pounds of fuel, and I'm, and, and, and I'm lost, can you help me? Like, <laughs> and so I, I, we were in contact with our tanker because we were short of fuel. It was coming up toward northern Laos and we said, uh, tanker, you got, you, we got a man with six minutes of fuel. If you don't refuel him, we lose another airplane or North Vietnam. But you gotta come in further against their rules. They did, they hooked him up at zero fuel and Harry and I, we jogged, jogged it briefly and we said, with this airplane, if we, if we go to 35,000 35, feet, it seems to be my favorite, but it was a good altitude. We said if we go to 35,000 feet 
And if we can get that, that high before we flame out, and if we can get within 70 miles of the Mekong River, that's the division between Laos and Thailand. Thailand's free. Uh, and we said, if we can get within 70 miles of the Mekong River and this airplane quits, this big old airplane, it'll glide two miles per thousand feet at 270 knots. And we got to 35,000 feet, we kept getting closer and closer to the Mekong, and we got within about 72 miles, and the airplane was sputtered, and then in zero down, zero fuel, made an air start, but there was nothing left in it. And so we started gliding, and it took us a while. We'd ride 270 knots, and we glided 75 miles, and we thought, if we can get across the Mekong, we can eject, and then we're okay. And not only do we make the Mekong, there's a base Udorn, had F-4s there, I don't know, it was 15 miles or so from the Mekong, and we rolled out on a final approach, and the airplane quit again, and it was just before we touched down and uh, we made it on the ground, but uh, you can imagine sitting in that airplane and you're, uh, you're you're chunking along and you're hoping the the MiGs are gone and they're not going to follow you down there, which they didn't that far. But uh, it, was, it was a tense moment to, to glide 70 miles and uh, from 35,000 feet. It was a good airplane, uh, just a good airplane. And uh, when I saw it last night, it's, uh, I, don't, I don't know if it was chills or nostalgia or uh, emotion that I saw. It's a beautiful airplane, especially with the gears up. One, two, three, cutter. Yeah, <laughs> 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 <laughs>